Welcome. This is a modified cranial nerve exam. I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Dr. Brian Benninger. I'd like to thank our future physician here for being a volunteer patient. Today we're not going to go through the whys and wherefores. We're just going to conduct the modified cranial nerve exam. Okay. We will start from the first one and work our way from 1 to 12. First cranial, uh, cranial nerve is the olfactory. I'd ask the patient to please close your eyes and block off one nostril and then breathe in. And do you smell anything? Yes. And what do you smell? Coffee. Okay, and can you block the opposite side? Can you smell anything? Yes. What does it smell like? Coffee. Okay. Now, if she was to say that it didn't smell or I couldn't smell much on one side compared to the other or both of them were uh, problematic, I would ask her, have you recently had a cough or a cold? No. No upper respiratory tract infection? Okay. Uh, are you a smoker? Have you recently stopped smoking? No. Okay. I would then ask, have you had, uh, been involved in any kind of a road traffic accident, um, had a head injury where a concussion may have been involved or fallen off a bicycle, anything of that sort, within the past sort of month? No. no. Okay. I would then move on to the second cranial nerve, which would be the optic nerve. I would ask the patient to look straight ahead. I would look at the pupils and assess whether they were equal or not and look at their sizes. If they were equal, I would document that they were equal. And then I would assess whether they're, they have the papillary light reflex. So I would start and show just the general part of the light beam there. And I would look at the same side, and that looks good. Then I would do it a second time and look at this side here. I would then come over. I'd go once with the soft beam, watch this pupil. I'd do it a second time watching the opposite pupil. They are equal and reactive to light. I would document that. I would then ask and say, could you please read what's on the poster over there? Sky high camera. Okay, and so that would assess that she can read and she has a, a, her vision to read is fine. Okay, and now I would go to the peripheral nerve, uh, or peripheral vision, and I would start up in this quadrant. Follow what I'm going to do. This is going to just be my hand moving, and this is my hand moving with my fingers, okay? Just tell me when you see my fingers moving. No. Okay. Very good. So she didn't say that my hand was moving, just my fingers. I would do that in all four quadrants. Okay. And then I would go on to assess the disc itself. And I would stand an arm's distance away. First thing I would do is I would adjust the ophthalmoscope so I could see very clearly. And I would look for the red light reflex. Once I saw that, I would tell the patient, I'm going to be coming very close. I would use my left eye to the patient's left eye, and I would come in very close, looking for the disc, the quality of the disc, and the vessels coming away from the disc, um, assessing whether there's any copper wiring, cotton wool spots, anything of that sort. Okay? I would then do accommodation. I would point my finger here and say, follow it right down here. Very good. Okay, I just do that once. I then move on to the nerves of the oculomotor, trochlear, and the abducens, 3, 4, and 6, and I would create my H. So if you would like to follow my hand all the way over, keep your head straight and just move your eyes. Very good. Come back to the midline, opposite hand. Very good. So what I've done is made a very wide H. I've stressed the system. Her eyes moved very well. There was no nystagmus, vertical or horizontal moving with that. So I'm pleased with that. Now I go to the fifth cranial nerve, the trigeminal, which is going to be ophthalmic, maxillary, and mandibular. Okay, I'm going to touch her skin. It's not painful anywhere. I'm going to be asking you to move things. Okay. So I would go once. Tell me if it feels the same on both sides. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay, good. Now I'm going to assess the motor aspect, okay? I'd like you just to go ahead and open your mouth a couple times and close it, okay? That just tells me that she can deploy the mandible and elevate it against gravity and therefore would be a 3 out of 5 on the power scale. Now what I would do is put my fingers just in front of where the tragus is of the ear. I'm roughly right about there is where the TMJ joint is going to be. I'm going to ask her to clench her teeth firmly. Now right there I can actually feel the masseter contracting and I'll ask her to do that again. Just relax and then clench them. Now I'm feeling the temporalis, okay? From there I would ask her to waggle her chin side to side. Okay, I could provide some resistance there. 
Okay, I'm going to put my hand on top here. Open your mouth. Don't let me shut it. Okay, very good. Good resistance there. I'll then move on to the seventh cranial nerve. Go ahead and furrow your uh, brow. Very good. Close your eyes tight. Screw them up real tight. Don't let me open them. Very good. Go ahead and smile. Okay, now blow your cheeks out wide. Don't let me push them in. Don't let me push them in. Very good. Make like a frog's neck. Excellent. Well done. Good. I'm satisfied with the facial nerve or the, or the nerve of um, muscles of facial expression. I would then go to the eighth cranial nerve and just tell me when you can actually feel my fingers or no. you can hear my fingers moving. No. Okay. And I would do that on both sides. No. Okay. Very good. Uh, the other option is I could. And what did I just whisper? Very good. Okay. All right. And then I would go to the, um, the vestibular portion was uh, if I watched her or, the, or any patient walk in, I would assess their vestibular ability in a crude manner. Or if I hadn't, I would have asked her to walk four steps or so, turn around and come back, watching the turn in particular. I then go to the ninth and tenth cranial nerves, and I would ask the patient to go ahead and open your mouth. I would shine a torch in there. I would then introduce an instrument to touch the back of the pharynx to elicit the gag reflex. While I was doing that, I would be watching the soft palate to see if it was raising equally on both sides, okay? I then go on to the 11th cranial nerve, which is the spinal accessory nerve. Go ahead and shrug your shoulders. Okay, one more time. Don't let me push them down. Very good. Okay, I'd like you to look to the right, look to the left, put your chin down, and then look up. Okay, now, turn against, turn to the, there you go, and look to the opposite side. Very good. Now go ahead and try to put your ear down towards your shoulder and the opposite side. Very good, okay? And I would have then assessed the trapezius and the sternocleidomastoid. Both of them I find acceptable for strength and power. We then move on to the 12th cranial nerve. I would ask the patient to go ahead and stick your tongue out, opening your mouth. Uh, very good. And I would watch that for about 20 seconds, looking for fasciculation or any migration in either or drift of the tongue in either way. Thanks very much. I would like to thank her. And one can do this in less than five minutes, and that would be a modified cranial nerve exam. Thanks very much.